you know, those who want to suck up to Mr. Pickens occasionally wear Oklahoma State orange, too. You know, Brian, you know what's going to happen in 10 minutes? What's that, Boone? The Kansas Jayhawk. Allen Fieldhouse. Oklahoma State, Kansas. 6 o'clock. Do so, I feel a wager so coming I, on? We're going to knock this out in about four minutes. From now. <laughs> <laughs> what could, would you guys like to complete the wager here? Uh, you don't bet against KU on basketball. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I don't bet against you on energy, and, and you've been shorting it lately. <laughs> you know, I, if there's any lesson in, in what's happened to the price of oil over the last six months, I guess, dropping 50%, going below 45 briefly today, six-year low, is maybe is it that it's just another, another commodity? This isn't the first time oil has uh, power dived like this, but uh, if you remember, uh, we had a tough one in 86. But this isn't that kind of a drop in the market. Right now you have, uh, I guess, concentrated orange juice is uh, it, you oversupplied the market, and when you do with a commodity, all of us know it's gonna it's gonna come down. That's exactly what's happened. So this isn't orchestrated. I mean, there no. is. I've read the argument that that this is this is a Saudi plot. This is an OPEC plot to to run all the frackers out of business and then open the no, market. No, back the, up. the 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 Saudis have not overproduced because they're producing just about everything they can do, which is about nine and a half million barrels a day. Uh, they claim two million more of capacity. Uh, I don't believe they have it. I think 10 million barrels, is that's it for them. Well, who did it then? We did. We did. The American industry overproduced. and. We're the only country in the world today that has added oil production. So I don't want anybody getting up and saying, hey, the Saudis did it to us. No, we did it to ourselves. So we did it to ourselves in a, in a, in a positive sense. Was it, is it greed, this overproduction, or is it technology that's done this? I don't, you know, greed to me is hard to explain. Well, I mean. I mean, you're, you're out there trying to make money. Yeah. That's. That's why we're all in business. Okay. I, I, Is it the profit? I still remember one time I was testifying for some congressional committee and somebody said something about being greedy. I said, greedy? I said, you tell me what greedy is. Well, you like to make money. I said, hey, you show me a business that went in business yeah. to lose money. There are none of those. It's, <laughs> it's happened, but uh, you don't go in business. But and you don't go into business to break even. You go in business to make money is what you do. Now, if you want to uh, you know, call that greedy, I, I don't get it. But anyway, uh, no, what happened to us in the United States is our technology advanced on horizontal drilling and multiple fracks in the horizontal hole, and uh, we had the resources here to develop. Yeah, my guess is that technology is not standing still. It never seems to. It probably... While you and I are sitting here talking, there's some scientists back there trying to enhance fracking and come up with new ways of recovery. And yep. I mean, it's and, and is this just the beginning? And there are also a group of scientists somewhere, and several of them, that are trying to turn people back on age. That's the guys I'm looking <laughs> at. <laughs> I'm right behind you. Actually. Yeah. But I mean, this comes at a time when. I, you know, I think of Clean Energy, the company that you own half of and you've supported for a long time, is out putting in fueling stations for uh, CNG and, and that are being used now all over the country. And uh, everybody, whether it's Elon Musk or now GE in an aggressive, I mean, G GM in an aggressive way, is trying to get electric cars out there. And Toyota's trying to get us to drive uh, cars that, you know, go on, on hydrogen. And uh, Okay, I'm with you up to hydrogen. <laughs> You, you remember, I'm trying to think, was it, uh, uh, it was a Zeppelin that, uh, <laughs> you know, that they were, they were going to commercial use on it. I think it was back in the 30s, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And they were landing it at, uh, where was it? In New Jersey, in Lakehurst, New, New Jersey. Lakehurst, yeah. And uh, they had a, some spark, but 
and ignited and a lot of people were killed. So wait, I, so you're saying that Ford Pintos like that are going to be popping up all over the country? I'm saying you don't want to use hydrogen. I mean, this stuff is is not safe. Okay. And uh, but I'm for anything that's American. I don't, and I, I, I don't uh, electric car. That's fine with me. I don't care uh, if it's American. I'm for it. But but dollar and a half gasoline is that gonna run that out of business? Run Zeppelins out of business? Well, I mean, Zeppelins had, had probably had a had a bad picture on the front page of the papers. Right? You know, they ran themselves out. No, but no. But, I mean, you know how it's gone. We've been through this a jillion times. Is it you know we we have a an energy shortage and and everybody says we got to go drive smaller cars. We got to come up with better ways to do it. Then price goes down. Next thing you know, everybody's driving Yukons again. Uh, you got it. That, that's the, <laughs> that's the history of energy in America. That uh, when it gets cheap, we get a bigger car. But uh, you know, you're gonna you've got a trillion five hundred thousand five hundred million uh, economy in Texas, and is it going to be hurt by uh, prices for oil going down? There'll be parts of the state that will. Uh, Houston, San Antonio, uh, kind of look alike. Dallas, Austin looks different. We, we are not as dependent on the industry as San Antonio and Houston is. Of course, Midland, Texas is. Uh, I can tell you, you go out there to, to the uh, Dairy Queen, and uh, take two barbers with you to shave one guy. I mean, their faces are pretty long <laughs> out there. It's kind of slow Her laugh there, but thanks long. for pulling me out. Oh. So you're saying you wouldn't be putting up a new Holiday Inn in, in uh, Midland? To- I wouldn't, but you'll be back putting them up a year and a half, two years. Uh, you haven't asked me, so I'll volunteer. When does the price of oil go back up, say, to $90, $100? Uh, I think you're 12, 18 months away from it. But what's going to happen to you is you're going to go through the first quarter of this year and you'll hit all-time highs on inventory of oil. Uh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna go into big inventories here in the first quarter, and it may it's gonna run over into the second quarter, and then things are going to turn around because you're gonna shut down enough rigs that these wells that are in the shale are declining rapidly. So you're going to go into, uh, once you are not replacing uh, your production, you'll go into decline. Decline will come uh, third quarter of this year uh, in the United States. We'll start to decline. And when you do that, you're going to use up those inventories of oil very fast. And then the price of oil turns around. And uh, 12 to 18 months, you'll be back up to 90 to to $100 a barrel. So uh, logic would assume that the, the, the areas that are more expensive to drill, would, those areas would be slow to come back and harder hit? No. You're, it, it, well, it. slower, uh, if, if you're talking about a year, then it's slow. I mean, uh, you know, when things go down, uh, I remember a guy was, a doctor diagnosed him with uh, – cancer and he said you're not going to be around but a couple of years they were good friends and he was very frank with him and he said you only have two years uh harold to live now a couple of months passed and uh, the doctor found out that the that the guy that was terminal uh, had bought two drilling rigs and he saw him at a christmas party and he said you know harold i don't know whether you heard me or not but I told you, you weren't going to be around but a couple of years. And he said, I heard you bought two drilling rigs. He said, yeah, you buy two drilling rigs and have them for two years, you'll think you've lived 10 years longer. (laughs) 